Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Welcome to our lecture um, for hashtag modeling and analysis. And today um, we gonna try to understand what is hydronic system before uh, we try to design the hydronic system in the hashtag solution. So I'm just uh, going to refresh again what are the components that involve in hydronic system and um, yeah maybe there are some terms that you need to understand before we go deeper into the in designing uh, the hydronic system right so first of all um, there are two types of uh, system in hydronic system which are open system and closed piping system and for open piping system that means that uh, it is open to the atmosphere and um, the system fluid is exposed to the atmosphere and uh, um, closed piping system uh, is a system which is closed to an atmosphere. Okay, the, uh, the example of open system, open piping system uh, is cooling tower. And for close, closed piping system, um, for example, um, water chiller, uh, it is a closed system. Um, and for cooling tower, um, it is open, open piping system because we need atmosphere for that process, for the evaporation process. Because the cooling tower uses uh, evaporating uh, process for cooling. Okay, these are the example, the the, the schematic example of. Uh, open and closed piping system and as you can see here um, from the cooling load I mean the space for cooling and chiller everything is closed the fluid is not exposed to the atmosphere so that the heat transfer uh, the, the water that is already chilled from the water chiller um, remains cool throughout um, throughout the piping to the space so that it can close the space and for cooling tower here is a cooling tower is an open piping system because the water is exposed to the atmosphere and um, the water is cooled via evaporation process here. Right, other component which are uh, which is involved in hydronic system is pipe, of course. Pipe um, it conveys the fluid uh, from one component to another, and um, it it is represented by single line in the HVAC solution software and uh, may be used only with hydronic components. And the pipes are red when the fluid is hot and um, the color of the pipes are blue when um, it carries uh, cool fluid. Okay, and in piping, there is heat loss that you need to understand. Um, and heat, uh, heat loss is automatically calculated based on the length of the pipe. And uh, please uh, remember that uh, you need to uh, enter the input, the length for the pipe for both supply and return for the piping system so that you will get the total heat loss but if you want a detailed heat loss analysis you want to do the a detailed heat loss analysis then 
uh, you need to um, enter length at each individual pipe so you know the heat loss for the heat loss for uh, every single pipe right so once the length is entered the pipe heat loss size and volume of the pipe uh, are calculated okay For pipe sizing in HVAC solution, maximum unit heat loss. So we as a user should uh, enter the maximum unit heat loss and maximum velocity constraints so that the software can size the pipes. And the constraint, this value are set at each pipe. Um, and for pipe fittings, pipe fa uh, fitting factor is used uh, because normally pipe fitting factor uh, is uh, sufficient uh, to be used because the exact installation of piping system seldom exactly match the design. So you need to put in the pipe fitting factors. And pipe variable, uh, there are several variables for the pipes that you can uh, alter. For example, um, pipe material, you can double click on the pipe and change the material in the equipment tab. And material, um, there are normally used for pipe, uh, weak steel extra strong steel type k copper type l copper and type m copper and the pipe friction will be automatically adjusted by the software based on the pipe type that you use all right air cool chiller um it's actually a chiller basically it's a chiller it's exactly the same as water cold chiller. The only thing that differentiates these two are um, the uh, is the the way that the heat is uh, dissipated into the surrounding. And for air cold chiller, we use um, air to um, I mean, air from the fence, we use fence to reject the heat into the surrounding. And for um, water cool chiller, we use water. We use water via cooling tower to dissipate the heat into the surrounding. Okay, basically a chiller, um, the function of chiller is to extract heat from the chill fluid and rejects the heat to the surrounding. And of course, uh, in chiller, there are also components uh, to chill the water. And basically the components are uh, the same as uh, in vapor compression cycle, vapor compression in air, normal air conditioner, normal split unit, which are condenser, evaporator, um it's only that the, the the condenser will be connected to air cold chiller or water cold chiller okay so air cold chill types um in addition uh it, it also the chiller also has its own refrigerant circulated in the in the chiller um and the process is it's like the compression and expansion cycle. Okay, it's actually uh, the same, uh, similar as um, split unit. It's only in a bigger size. That's all. And echo chiller types uh, depends on the types of compressor that you use. 
For example, we have here reciprocating screw, rotary centrifugal, echo chiller, scroll, echo chiller, and so on. So it depends on the types of uh, compressor that you use. Same goes to water cool chiller, it's exactly the same. Have uh, also ha uh, has evaporator, condenser, and so on. The, its own refrigerant. Um, the only thing is the the heat from the refrigerant is extracted by water, and the water, um, the hot water will go to cooling tower to reject the heat via e evaporation process. Okay, now we come to air handler, air handler unit. So the air handler is a central component by which air is conditioned and then uh, delivered through ductwork system into a space and basically the function of air handler is to filter any unwanted particulates or air particles um, from outside air or fresh air um, or maybe written air uh, and then uh, it condition the air whether it is cooled or it is heated via uh, cooling coil or heating coil and normally an air handler it has a cabinet which houses various components that I've mentioned just now um, included filters fans coils and so on then the economizer rate and Economizer rate is used to set the airflow, a certain airflow during certain time or certain season uh, to be processed by the air handler and um, it is set at the air handler itself. Why do we need economizer? Um, because certain time or during certain seasons, for for example, in Malaysia we have rainy season, and during this time the term the temperature in Malaysia is quite cool. It's quite uh, it is reduced uh, than the t the normal temperature in the normal weather. So um, when the, the temperature goes down it means that the cooling load is also reduced and so we do not need the compressor to I mean the the airflow we do not need as much as in a normal season so we can set we can um, reduce the airflow via economizer only for this time right what is cooling tower a cooling tower is a device which is used to um, dissipate heat from uh, water from the chiller and normally it is connected to water cooled chiller or in some cases it can also be connected directly to a components um, which requires a direct cooling consumption um, and then um, cooling tower it works via evaporation process so via evaporation uh, evaporating effect it will leave the water um, cooler than before so it accepts the cooling tower accepts heat transfer via a working medium from a chiller for example water or from other components that are directly connected to cooling tower and a cooling tower will um, you know, the water that 
comes in a cooling tower will be sprayed so that it will turn into droplets to increase the surface area of the water droplets and so the evaporation process is easier to occur and the water will further goes into a part of cooling tower which is called fill um, and fill is, as, is actually an evaporated um, plate um, and when the water droplets goes into the fill and it will um, it will uh, refine the water droplets further so that the evaporation process will occur faster right there are many types of cooling tower and it may uh, according to the type of fan that is used in the cooling tower or it may also um, according to the field material which is used in the cooling tower and it depends um, if you ask me which one to be is, is the best to be used well it depends it depends on your type of application whether it is small medium or high um, large size of application uh, do you need um, a long life uh, parts or a long life cooling tower but you do not mind the higher cost that will that it will incur or do you need a um, compact footprint of cooling tower because you have a restricted um, space for the cooling tower installation and so on or do you need a low maintenance system then it is um, selected according to your needs all right and cooling tower volume uh, is calculated by um, di dividing the weight of the, um, the the by dividing the difference between the shipping and operating weights of the cooling tower over the density of water so everyone knows that density of water is 1000 kilogram per meter cubic and you just have to weight the cooling tower during the shipping you can get from the shipping sheet and um, the operating weight of cooling tower is actually the the one that is uh, already um, filled with water and what is cooling tower sum a cooling tower sum is actually a tank where you can store water temporarily for cooling tower system um, whenever the cooling tower is not in use during certain seasons um, for example in a four season country during winter then we need a sump um, to store um, all water in equipment and piping and so on and it has to be large enough for this purpose um, for example when you do the drain down process the drain down procedure uh, because of the winter season then we need a sum all right um, just to mention that you need to know all these components because you need all these components in your design and before you go further do your design you first have to understand all types of components that we have here right next is damper damper is actually to control the airflow it is like a valve controls water flow 
but the damper controls the airflow and there are different types of damper for example we have here opposed blade um, it is for general use and uses blades swivel in opposing directions and this will create higher airstream turbulence and if you talk about turbulence then um, it is related closely related with noise of course when it has higher turbulence then it is noisier but this opposed blade type it has superior control characteristics but for parallel blade it is also for general use but it has less airstream turbulence and therefore lower noise now let's talk about air type air type um, because there are so many components that are related to air type for example fan um, and so on um, and before you use the to choose the right component you have to first understand what is supply air for example um, fan for supply air fan for written air fan for written relief air fan for relief air and fan for exhaust air um, for supply and exhaust air it is quite um, clear and we know that supply air is the air that is um, processed by the air handler or any terminal component and this supply air this uh, from the uh, issue or terminal component it will goes to space and for exhaust air it is air that is exhausted from the space to the outside so from space to the outside it is exhausted air and written air what is the difference between written air written relief air and relief air so just imagine um, there is a issue and a space a issue and a space and in between there is um, written relief fan well the air from the space or from the written relief fan that is returning to the a issue is the written air and the air from the space which goes to relief written relief fan then it is called written relief air right okay once more the air from the space or from the written relief fan that goes to the a issue that written to the a issue is written air but the air from the space that goes to the written relief fan it is called written relief air and the relief air is the air that is um, from written relief fan and it is relieved to the outside so it will not go to um, space or it will goes to a issue it is relieved to the outside okay So what is expansion tank? Well, an expansion tank is actually a storage or tank that allows the water that the uh, that uh, water that allows water to expand and contract under varying temperatures. And whenever the, for example, when there is an uh, increase in temperature, then the water will expand. And if there is no expansion tank, the system will become overpressurized and break. All the piping and so on will break. But if it is allowed to expand into the expansion tank, then the pressure will be maintained and if you go to hashvac software 
you can actually find this expansion tank under hydronic tab with this symbol and under if you click on the arrow um, on the sim uh, be, be the you, if you click the arrow on the symbol you can see a drop la drop down list and there is several types of expansion tank which are listed for example here we have vertical bladder full expansion vertical bladder portable water vertical bladder partial expansion and so on and, and the selection de again depends on your design and depends on your specification all right um, an expansion tank is normally sized based on uh, setting pressure setting a system pressure um, a, a percentage below the relief valve pressure okay of course it has to be set the system pressure has to be set below the relief valve pressure if it is higher then the relief valve will always be opened because the pressure is always um, exceed the the setting uh, because the 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 main um, task of relief valve is to relieve the pressure to the outside so that the system pressure is maintained all right and a common setting of um, the 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 difference between the system pressure and relief valve pressure is 10 percent and the higher is the system pressure um, therefore the, s the smaller is the expansion tank um, which means if the system can sustain a higher pressure then we won't need or we do not need um, a big expansion tank we just need a small one and the, uh, the system sorry the setting of the system pressure should not be too close to the relief valve pressure or else your relief valve will always open due to the fluctuations in your system pressure all right so where can you find this setting um, if you drag the expansion tank um, in your working space then you can double click on the expansion tank and this window will pop up and under key data you can see that system pressure below relief valve pressure can be set and the default value is 10 percent right what is maximum working pressure it is a pressure that is the max pressure that is allowed in the system and the maximum working pressure is by default set at 10 percent below the relief of pressure it's a setting that we show you just now and all components um, which are part of the system for example boiler valves piping and so on it must be rated to handle the maximum working pressure of the system and you really have to select your components that can sustain the maximum working pressure and relief of pressure uh, is a pressure to ensure that your piping system is not over pressurized so you install a relief valve and the relief valve will relieve the pressure when the relief valve pressure is rich to prevent uh, your components damage or your, the system components damage and the common relief valve settings are 75 to 90 psi or if you convert in kilopascal it is 517 to 620 kilopascal 
and most hydronic system are rated between 125 and 150 psi or in kilopascal it's 862 to 1034 kilopascal and again to recap the relief valve should be set below the lowest component maximum pressure to prevent the component's damage. Okay, this is just um, for your info. You can actually um, find the fluid volumes to size the expansion tank. Um, you can see under expansion tank, you just double click again on the expansion tank and under summary, you can see volume components. So the total volume of all components is 514 gallon. Okay, here for every component, it shows uh, individual volume for every component. So if you add up, then you'll have the total volume so this uh, your expansion tank should be sized based on this volume okay the valve right you can actually find your valve under hydronic pipe tab and there's many component there are many components under hydronic pipe but one of it is valve with this symbol and if you click on the arrow it has uh, many types of uh, valve and you should really understand which uh, what valve you are using for what purpose and this is just um, an example of valve click on the um, type that you want just um, drag into your working space But if you use wizard, then um, you just choose in the uh, wizard by answering the question from the wizard and your valve will be automatically um, um, put into the schematic uh, diagram here, hydronic schematic diagram. All right. Um, what is actually the function of valve again? Um, well, a valve is used to allow or shut off the flow or um, mod, mo uh, what we call modify the flow. Sorry, modulate, modulate the flow. And um, it is worth to remember that a valve it does not interact with temperature and the a valve does not affect flow but a valve do add um, on the system heat pressure that means the more valve you use um, the higher is the heat pressure of your system and it reappears in the project schedules when you print, um, print or print out the, the project schedules. And there are many types of valve, and with uh, different functions, but the valve will be covered in later lecture. Um, it's just here to make you familiar with the name of the valve there is angle gate valve um, for angled use there's ball valve and there's butterfly cork diaphragm gate globe and so on there are so many types of valve and it depends on your usage again whether you need um, a good and a valve which can sustain high pressure or you need a, a normal valve well it does not uh, you do not need a um, high pressure 
valve so you can use less cost valve for example so you have to also know how f um, whether you want to stop the flow or you want to modulate the flow and so on it depends on your again on your usage and specification so I think that's all from me this time so thank you for listening and hope to see you in my next video thank you